Hello traders, this is day number 92 of small cap market open test trading. We're going to start this video off a little bit differently. I'm going to start it off with a question and I'm serious about this. So please participate if you're serious about day trading and getting better as a day trader and helping others get better as a day trader. So look at the clock over here. It's 1032. So you know that I just finished trading or at least looking for trades and the one stock that was really strong at the open or looked really enticing at the open was Redbox, RDBX. So I want you right now before we talk about anything else to go down to the comment section and just answer, were you excited about Redbox this morning? If you saw it, of course. Uh, were you excited at the market open for Redbox? Now I'm going somewhere with this. So just answer, yes, I was excited about Redbox at the open or no. I wasn't even though I saw it or I didn't see it or something like that. So where am I going with this? Let's take a look at the red box chart. We'll put it all on one big chart. I just wanted to, wanted to show you my multi chart page so you could see what I was looking at. This is just the spy. We were watching the market, uh, the S&P 500 at least take off and VERU popped up a little bit later. We might get a chance to talk about that. So let's look at red box on the big chart. And this is the daily chart, right? So you see that it meets all of my daily chart criteria. It's trading over the 200 MA, right? And then let's look at it on the screener actually first to see why would we be excited about this stock red box this morning. Now this is at 1030 right now or 1033, but at the open, it looked even more enticing and I'll explain why. So here's Redbox. You can see that it's the top volume traded stock on the small cap screener with 25 million shares over that. And the uh, next highest volume stock is trading with only 5 million shares. So that's already huge right there. The percent change is right around 20%. I believe it was about 22% at the open. You could see that it's trading with double its average volume right now. So obviously there's a lot going on with this stock, right? But does that mean that you just want to jump in, you want to get overly excited about it, jump in and hope for the best, take on double your position size or something like that. Definitely not. Now let's take a look at the chart and see how it looked in the pre-market. So let's go to the five minute chart just because this gives us kind of a nice wider view. So this gray area here, this is all the pre-market. And this is what it was doing the previous day. It was trading, um, let's see, the middle around $6, right? I got all the way up to almost $7. And then it just went sideways after market. And then in the pre-market, it really shot up from about, let's say, six seventy-five dollars to over a dollar, $1, dollar twenty almost, uh, and uh, price increase just in a few minutes, really, from 5.30 to 5.40, let's say. And then obviously it sold off, went sideways again, then huge push around nine o'clock and looking really strong. If you just see this part of the chart, right? So like, let's say it's nearly market open and you're just seeing this part of the chart and you're thinking, wow, that looks crazy strong. Maybe you're looking at it on the one minute chart and it'll look like this. And you're thinking, wow, this looks really strong. I'm really excited about this. I, I think I'm thinking about jumping in at the open. I want to go in big size because we haven't seen energy like this in the small cap sector for a long time. And what happens at the at the one minute open, you get a huge chop this way, you get a big green candle, maybe you're getting more excited about it. Then it breaks out over the pre-market high, which in and of itself is a pretty strong sign, but it's not enough. And then you get really excited. Maybe you add some more shares or jump in even stronger. And then what happens, this thing just takes off to the downside. So the whole reason I brought that up is not as a brag, because even me myself, when I first started trading, I would say for the first six months, maybe longer, this was exactly the kind of thing I was looking for. And I would get really excited when I saw it and I would just get ready to make a bunch of money at the open and jump in on the first one minute candle or the second one minute candle or the first time that it breaks out over its pre-market high or whatever. And the, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because that didn't work most of the time, just as today it didn't work. And I think today it, it was probably especially a dangerous day for people, especially small cap traders, because we have not seen this energy in so long, even in the pre-market. So you see this in the uh, pre-market and you get really excited for the open. And there's probably a lot of people, and I'm not saying, again, not saying this to brag, and I feel sorry for you if you got excited about this and you jumped in and you got burned. 
but I'm making a big point about this to maybe help that from happening in the future because that's something I used to do as well. And that's one thing that I love about the trading plan that I'm trading right now is it doesn't allow for that. It doesn't care really uh, in a big way. It doesn't care what happened in the pre-market. The only thing it cares about the pre-market is was a high established and then it wants to to see that high broken and then it wants to see that second high broken so that never happened you can see i have a price alert out here for the 869 level i wanted to see a pullback from this level doesn't matter how much but a pullback from this level and then i wanted to see a new high established and then another pullback and that's where i would get in and i'm not saying that trade would have worked out or even all three trades that i've allowed to take would have worked out i might have been stopped out three times if that would have happened but the beauty of, of this type of trading is I had no emotion into this trade. I wasn't excited. I, let me, let me uh, be 100% honest. Yes, I was a little bit excited about this stock thinking, wow, look at this energy, but I didn't do anything because I was excited. So, you know, I just, what, the point I'm trying to make is that I just followed the plan. The plan doesn't allow the excitement that I felt for seeing energy like this in the pre-market and at the open to overtake my strategy and my trading plan and just jump into a trade. So even though, yes, I was a little bit excited to finally see some small market energy like this, I didn't do anything about it other than follow my plan, put my lines out, put an alert out, waiting for something to happen. I give it till 1030, no matter what, I don't care that, that it had all this energy and that it might come back and might break out through all of these levels later on. I'm going to, going to uh, close, cancel this alert so that there is no chance of me getting excited if that alert gets triggered later on in the day when I'm not supposed to be trading. Look at this thing, you know, going off right now. You might be saying, oh man, you're an idiot because this thing may really take off and hit four, five, six R. And it might, it, it, it actually has a very good chance of doing that. But my trading plan and my rules and my strategy say to stop trading at 1030. There's another price alert from VERU, the other one that we were watching. And I'm going to ignore that one as well because we have gotten this far, 93 trades through this plan, and we're up 20R, we're up 20 times our risk at the 3R profit target. Why? Because I've stuck to the plan, because I've stuck to the strategy, because I haven't broken my rules, and because I haven't done things out of just sheer excitement. Yes, this stock will, I would say it has a greater than 50% chance of taking off later on today. Now, don't go in and, and start trading it just because I said that. But what I'm letting you know is that I expect that to happen. And if it happens, I'm okay with that. If it goes crazy without me, that's fine. And if it doesn't, hey, that's fine too. Either way, I, all that matters is that I stuck to my plan 100% of the time today. So that's it. And the last thing, if you if you want to stick around, we will take a look at VERU because there was something interesting there. And obviously now it's taking off again because it hit that price alert. Well, not necessarily taking off, but it hit the price alert. So this one was interesting because when it started to trigger, not trigger an entry, but trigger my attention to uh, watch it for a possible trade, it was trading right around 5%, that 5% threshold that I talk about. So I put this kind of orangey line on the chart and that's exactly at 5%. 12.99 is the 5% threshold. If it drops below that level, it's no longer up 5%. And that's something that I'm going to be doing uh, from now on because I want my trades to be as similar as possible and one of my criteria for all the trades is that I can't even put a stock on the chart if it's not above 5% on the screener but there is a chance that it pulls back below 5% at certain times during the day and I don't want to take trades at those levels because I want all of my trades to be taken on stocks that were trading over 5%. Again, that way the strategy is repeatable and the statistics actually mean something. That's the important thing is that the statistics actually mean something. So anyway, here we go. This thing is taken off. Again, if I was trading, um, if I was if this was still during the, the uh, trading time period between 9.30 and 10.30, I would be looking to place this white line wherever the high is and waiting for the pullback. But we're all done trading for the day, so we don't care about that. I'll show you the screener. This was interesting, too, because there was a lot of green on the screener today, on the small cap screener. 
but there were only two stocks that I was watching. Why? Because most of them did not meet the daily chart criteria. So we're still in, obviously, in a bear market. So there's going to be a lot of rejection going on. Where Your plan, if it's any good, should be rejecting a lot of stocks, should be rejecting a lot of trades right now because the markets are really weak or they're really volatile or whatever. So anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. It was a little different than what I normally do. We did not take a trade today, if that wasn't obvious, because we never got triggered to take a trade. So we're still at 93 trades, but the good news is we stuck to our plan 100%. We didn't lose any money. We're up 20 times our risk overall on the trading strategy so far, and I'll go over those results uh, probably next week. Tomorrow, I will not be around to trade. We're leaving town. And Monday is Memorial Day, so I wish everyone a happy Memorial Day weekend. If you have any questions about anything I said in this video or about my trading plan or trading strategy, just let me know in the comment section below and I will get back to you. As always, go into every single trade with a plan. Stick to that plan no matter what. Always take your stop losses and honor your profit targets. And in the long run, you should be green. Take care.